is what we are trying to get solution to it as we think about spiritual growth the problem that began here the solution of it is what we call spiritual growth uh, we are aware God asked man not to eat the truth that is in the middle of the of the garden they don't eat the tree of the knowledge of good and and evil wakati mungu alimwambia usikule when god asked him not to eat i think at the point adam said yes but when eve came in when eve came now is where the problem happened eve came and influenced him to eat what he should not have eaten Let's begin from verse 7. Now this after eating. And the eyes of both the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves a prawn. Sasa baada kuona kukula wakajikuta wakiwa uchi. That's what the Bible says. And then verse 8 says, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. You see now this is strange. This tells you that there's something, a specific place God has put them. And he has been coming to speak to them every evening. Now this time when he comes, and he's coming to the same place that they normally speak from. And the Bible says in verse 9, And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? In verse 8 he says, And the voice of the Lord God came walking in the cool of the day. That is in the garden. So when they heard that God is coming, they left. Meaning kuna mali, kila jioni wanakutana. The, the word there is the cool of the day, in the cool of the day. In the cool. In the garden, in the cool of the day. When you talk about a garden, you're talking about where there are trees. So if you talk about cool of the day, that means those trees, when the sun has went down, and the small, uh, the, the atmosphere is a bit, uh, the environment is quite cool. So God came to speak to them at that time. That is in the evening. Every day means God was coming there. You see, prayer did not begin in the New Testament. Prayer began with Adam. And prayer as far as this, this, this verse is not asking God what you want because at this point Adam had everything Adam didn't lack anything but the communication between him and God was happening every every day he has everything he has no problem at all but the coming of God every evening to Adam is to show him why he created him. To teach him the reasons of his existence. Why are you in this garden? Why are you on the face of the earth? Why did I give you all these resources that you have? As God comes every day, he learns more, 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 more of why he exists as a person. Jaisi kuya leo, ni ngumu sana kwa wengi kujua kwa nini wamezali, wame, wame, wame umbwa. I was asking somebody, why were you created to serve God? How do you serve God? <laughs> to serve God is not enough. Kwa nini uliumbwa? Mimi siju. Ata adamu inabidi yawe na mungu kila siku. Ndiwajue. Even Adam himself. 
And let me say this statement. There is nothing more powerful than somebody who knows why he's existing. That person is as powerful as God. Hmm? I repeat. There is nothing powerful as a man or a woman who knows why they were created. Those ones don't even think about what they have or what they don't have. Those ones know. They know they have everything. If you know, you say like Abraham there. Sorry, Adam. Like Adam there. Adam, he's not thinking that he's lacking something. Somebody who knows why he's created. Because if you are to know that God is the one who is to inform to you. Meaning if you have God on your side, you have all things. And as long as the word of God is coming to you every day, you are as powerful as God himself. My statements might shock you, but it's true. As long as you are accessible to God, not accessible, you can be as powerful as, as God. God created Adam in an environment where he meets God every day. Nije siku moja tu ati Mungu ameninenea. Eh? Ukisikia tu Mungu amenenea, Mungu ameniambia hivi. Ndio some of us. Ukisikia tu prophet amekuja, Mungu alisema hivi. Mimi Mungu aliniona mimi. The first time I was told God, was the first time I got a prophecy. That's when I was in primary in Emmanuel Church those early days when you tukotu nae kwa 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 kwaya akasema mungu waliniambe wa kuzewe kamuangalia hindi kamulita mungu gani umaana wa mwanadamu uko katika kusikia neno lake kila siku the meaning of man is in understanding of the word of god meaning man will not have any meaning on earth without the word of god so adamu alikuwa na fursa ya kutembelewa na mungu si yeye anaenda kutafuta Mungu. Mungu amemweka mahali, God has put him somewhere and he comes every evening to him. The question is, why does he come to him? He want to open up his mind and tell him why he created him. Why he gave him all the resources. How he should rule the whole earth. Hata kama aliumbwa kama hakuwa na upunguvu au bila upunguvu anahitaji kusikia kutoka kwa Mungu kila siku. Sasa wakati alisikua Mungu anakuja, he he took off together with the wife. The question is is God not aware they are naked? you who told you kama 
Adamu alikuwa uchi Mungu hajaona The truth is this statement might surprise you but it's true The truth is God does not know that Adam is naked God does not know that Adam is naked Why is he asking who told you you are naked Even if he is naked he knows why he is naked might be as done then he asked him immediately has thou eaten of the tree where of i commanded thee that thou is running from God. I'm, I'm trying to show you is this. What I'm trying to show you is this. Because this is what I'm, I'm trying to show you why spiritual growth. After eating the forbidden fruit, we have discussed that we say the forbidden fruit is the, devil, the words of the devil that Adam said. But until they became evil. evil whatever they naturally learn run from God and the same thing that happened to this man here now after he had something evil in him he began running God is holy that's why when God is holy them that are, are doing evil things fear to appear before holy God So already evil has entered Adam. So at the voice of God he has to run. Just like today many are doing like that. Ako katika Now number one is running from God. And then God is wondering the information that he has came from where? Anyway. God is asking Adam, who told you you are naked? In other words, there's somebody else who is giving him information other than God. And that is God God warned him he told him do not partake of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil says knowledge that knowledge is not from god that's why he's asking adam who told you because god knows the information that does not come from him what he says how it makes you the information that does not come from god will oppress you will reduce you will cause you to lack peace will bring you to shame like like what we see here he found himself in a point where now he's naked he could not unaona sasa penye shida imeanza problem has already begun because adam began listening to a different voice that is not the voice of God he began listening to a voice that does not come from from God 
Shida sasa imeanza hapa. And that's why we need spiritual growth. When Adam was created, the only source she should get information is God. Now another source is bringing him information that God does not want. And that information is getting is leading Adam away from from God. So the first problem is now man is running from God. That's the first problem. Number 2. The man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Sasa shida imetokea. Did you eat of the tree I asked not to eat? Then he says, the woman that you gave me to be with me has given me to eat that fruit. Now, another problem. The first problem is between Adam and God. Now the second problem is between Adam and Eve. You see, any time the devil comes, he knows how to divide. Division does not come from God. The word of God knows how to put people together. Unity. Any information from that is not of God puts people aside. Now, the challenge is this. You will put in your mind information that is not from God and you come before God and you stand before him and begin telling him, God, I'm like this. God himself is wondering. From this point, from this point, you see, Adam should simply have repented and told God, you gave me instruction not to eat of forbidden fruit. I ate. Forgive me. If you could have said that, he did measure. He began blaming somebody. See me, ni yeye. Ukweli ni ata kama Eve ndio alikula na kampatia. Mtu wa kwanza mwenye mefanya dhambi ni nani? Ni Adam. Instruction Eve kupewa. Adam ndio alipewa. Ajamfundisha vizuri. Nambatua nakula, then anasema ye ndio. Alinipatia. Already now there's a problem. The next problem happens between human beings and animals now. Then Eve also said what? Eve also said it is the serpent, not me. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did it. I think Mungu pia mevona siku mrefu wapa. And the Lord God said to the serpent, Anakuja kwa Adam, Adam anasema, Eve. Anainda kwa Eve, Eve anasema, Serpent. <laughs> Why did you do that, Serpent. Serpent could not blame anybody else because he's not shetan he kufanya ufanya my vitu zenye haifai kutazama shetan yoli nifanya nifanya I think you are kusema yonge faa kusema shetan what you need to know is that before heavens and earth was created the devil has been thrown away from heaven that is one of the things that we don't know you see we have not been explained Men have not explained to us how the devil was thrown from heaven before the heavens and the earth was created. And God knew that. And that's why he says, do not allow that tree. He has talked about the tree of life, which is the word of God, to eat. 
Chapter number 2 verse 9. Let me read for you something here. Genesis 2 9. The Bible says. Genesis 2 9. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the side and good for food. From the ground food. Tree that brings food. That is for your, your body. Number two. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden. That is for your spirit. And the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Is the devil. But then in the same chapter 2. He tells him. Don't eat. Hmm? Verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man. Saying of every tree of the garden. Thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou shalt eatest thereof. Thou shalt surely die. So when God was asking him. Who told you. That you are naked. That is another information. Because you know God cannot tell you. How shameful you are. He only knows how to remove shame from you. God doesn't know how to despise you. Irrespective of how you are. How bad you think you are. He doesn't know how to say that. He simply says, come to me as you are. And he knows how to improve you. Every knowledge, information, that when you speak, brings people down, does not come from above. That's why he's, asking, he's wondering, who told you you are naked? God is still forgiving if Adam could have said, forgive me. And you see, because no one of them was repentant. No one. Not Adam, not Eve. What, what did God do? He multiplied their problems. Chapter number 3, verse 21. Down there. And to Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skins and cloth them. That's our coach. In a bit, you are the same war. And goes here, nyama. Amami fugo, wherever it is. And then in verse 22, the Bible says, And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat, and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden, to till the land from whence he was taken. He sent Adam and Eve from the garden of Eden. Verse 26. So he drove out the man. Verse 24, sorry. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. The garden of Eden is not a physical garden in a place. See Shamba, in your matundeo take on Danny, now Adam will wake up and Danny Shamba in your to know that he or my Garden of Eden. The word Eden means a place where the presence of God dwells. That's what the word Eden means. Where the presence of God dwells. So man was created. In a place where God is. You see, it doesn't matter whether you are in desert. What matters most is whether God is with you. That's all that matters. Abraham was sent to Israel. The current Israel. Canaan. Then they call it Canaan. Do you know Israel? The current Israel is a desert. And the food they make in that place cannot be made anywhere else in the, in the whole world. Chakula nye wanatangeneza uko kwa. Si yu wapu wapu ni kama italbi. Ama isa ya merile hapa. Na lesa misi. Lekini chakula nye natoka uko. Bishop Oye de Poalianza, 
university ngine anakita landmark university na akawapeleka wasomi wote wa Nigeria huko mkuje kuone you want to help people to produce more food akawapeleka pale walienda kusoma miezi mbili tatu kujifunza kutoka Waisraeli in desert so what matters is not where you are it is where whether god is with you where god is with you is when you hear to his voice and do what he says that is where the presence of god is the presence of god we'll talk about the kingdom of god because there's so much about the kingdom of god we we'll learn about it now where the word of god is received god is present and anything can happen to that man who receives the word of god the word of god is equal to god as you take in the word it changes all things about your life around the word of god that's why you see for god it doesn't matter how terrible you are <laughs> how rich you think you are how bad you think you are he can turn around your story within a day he can change your story that's why we are singing who has the final say if you only know that god has the final say in your life you will not give up on anything about your life he knows how to bring good things out of mess i'm talking about god he knows his word has transform transforming ability that turns us around bible says as we look let me read that verse in jesus name let's let's read chapter number chapter number 3 of second corinthians verse 18 the Bible says but we all with open face beholding us in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even by the Spirit of God this as we look into the word we are changed into the same image in other words whatever you are seeing in the word you become so when adam was placed in the garden of eden he was to operate by the word of god but instead of operating by the word of god he began accessing other information that opposes what god is saying and you see god is god does not embellish amut no he didn't say adam you're the only man i have on earth hata kama umememesa pendelea kufanya kazi hakuna kitu kama hiyo alifukuzwa lack of the word of god in you this qualifies you to be useful <laughs> don't know if you get what i'm saying you don't have the word in you you're not fit to be used by god you're not fit kwa sababu sasa ameamua kusikiza kwingine na sio neno lake Adamu alifukuzwa unaweza kufukuzwa Now that is where the problem of all human beings began Because now Adam when has been chased from the garden can no longer access God and his knowledge The problem now remains the first problem is between Adam and God The second problem is be between human beings people and people the first problem is between god and man the second problem 
it is between man and man it began here now god human beings cannot access god anymore in fact sasa utaona katika agano jipya the old testament not agano jipya agano ya kale in the old testament uh like when when Moses met God and then God sent him is a day he prepared people he says today you will see God come and hear him <laughs> you know what happened there so he says three days mwage vizuri in three days mwage mvai ngo mpya utaenda kukutana na nani na Mungu and they they came near the mountain what happened lightning thunders all over and Moses is standing on the mountain and those things are happening but for them they're like now hey, my friends these are terrible you came for the first time to meet God thunders and lightning everywhere I was speaking is the man to go chapter number 4 of uh, of revelation kuna watu wengine mtashangaa mfike mbinguni the same thunder and lightning is there for your formation read chapter number 4 of of revelation the bible says out of the throne comes thunders lightning the throne where jesus sits kuna wengine mtataka kutoroka na mko mbinguni na na bidi ina inabidi mjue heaven iko aje from the throne the bible says the thunders lightnings and there are four cherubs immediately after the throne and there are the 24 elders surrounding and these people are there thunders lightning all this thing happening but they're still worshiping god kuna wengine tutatoroka people came to the mountain and there was thunders lightning and everything they told moses please go here and bring us the message sisi tunaogopa kama mungu ako hivyo and from that day you know is only what moses tell them that they hear but they refused to go to meet god these are two 0.5 million people where are they getting the information to live by they're not getting from god now unachapa mtu kofi na ujui kama hiyo ni dhambi moses has to sit you down and tell you this is wrong this is wrong this is wrong you do something to somebody you don't care when his com- the commandments were given to him what the commandments could speak about is how number one to relate with who god number two how to relate with the ten commandments that we have been given or they were given do you remember the ten commandments what is the first commandment Thou shall not any other god besides because I am God I'm a jealous God number 2 Now Rudisha Sunday school <laughs> Number 2 inasemaje Do not make any image and do what and bow to it number 3 hmm? do not take the name of the lord your god in vain in other words do not swear in vain mak arabi remember those days what good that <laughs> and there's a few people from this side on uh, okay so 
how do they say in Kiswahili? Mtu akisema makarabi inamaanisha those for Muslims. Hata eh? sisi tuko tukisema hiyo. Rabbi Gudda. So if you say that so I say you are, you are speaking the name of God to confirm that what you said is true. And you are lying. Wakina Jesus. Mungu ni uwe kama nilisema ukweli uongo. <laughs> Mungu ni uwe. <laughs> that is where Do not take the name of God in and vain number four. Remember to keep the Sabbath day holy. Number five. Now the first four is about God. The remaining six is about people. The first four is about God. The next six is about how to live with people. Honor. Remember to honor your father and mother all the days of your life so that your life will be prolonged. Number six. Thou shalt not kill. Number seven. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not steal. You steal from who? From God. From somebody somewhere around you. Uh -huh. The other one. Thou shalt not false, be a false testimony about somebody. The last one. Thou shalt not covet your neighbors. Anything of your neighbors. That's about other people. It's the same problem that began when man stopped listening to who? To God. Now, what did Jesus say about the greatest commandment? Hmm? Love your God. Mm hmm. It is found where? Matthew chapter number 22 verse 34. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Honest, please. What did this say? I'm reading chapter number 22 of Thank you. I'm reading chapter number 22 of Matthew verse 25. Then one of them which was a lawyer asked him a question, tempting him and saying, a lawyer here doesn't mean the lawyer we know these days. These are people who have known the most the, the, these are people been taught in the, in, the, in the teachings or in the law of Moses. So the lawyer is asking Jesus to tempt him. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? They know the law is the five books of, the, of Moses. But they're asking, oh, which is the greatest? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. With all your soul, with all your heart, and with all your mind. Now, when you see, what you see there is mind and, and soul and heart. Mind is strong information. If you love your God with your mind, it means you put his word in your mind. More than other information. And I told you, if you have time for his word, you'll have him in your life.
the second one, verse 39. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And this thing is not easy. This thing is not easy. Thou shalt love your neighbor as you are. Hata leo nejo kublemia na hiko. Sindio. Hata leo. What is spiritual growth? You know, naturally, anybody who is not, who is just has come on this earth, there's a way we behave naturally. There's a way we behave naturally. <laughs> One of the things that the devil did, he displaced love, which is the nature of God. The Bible says God is love. He displaced love from our nature. So that we are selfish. It is me and me alone. I, me and I, me and myself. Nobody else. That one the devil put in us. How did he put in us? Let me show you. Isaiah chapter number 14. Verse 12. How hast thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How hast thou cut down to the ground with this weakened nation? Anybody who receives information from the dead the devil is weakened. Is weak. And then he says in verse 13, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the thrones of God. Number two. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. And the sides of the north. Number three. Number four. I will ascend above the heads of the clouds. Number five. I will be like the most high. I will. I will. It's about now who? Me. When Adam ate that fruit. This thing entered us. Is everything is about who? God is the one that created him. But he says I'll ascend above him. I'll get the best place above God. I will do this. I will. I will, I will, I will, I will. Be careful when you say I will. Huh? And these all five things was deposited in our nature. And then yet, I will, I will. So when Adam ate of the forbidden fruit, this selfish nature of the devil entered us. So man became selfish. It's not about anybody else. It's about, about me. Even that's the two greatest commandments I've read to you. Thou shalt love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as you are. Immediately in chapter 4, we see the murder of Abel caused by the brother. Chapter 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. When man was disconnected from God, it is disaster only, nothing else. Disaster. That is how dangerous it is to live without the word of God. I mean disaster. <laughs> when the man sang the song, Kwake Yesu Nasimama, Najawa Litoyos Kizungu, Yosoni Kizungu, Waliwa. But the English one says, uh, what does it say? In English, that song says what? He says, except Jesus, every other place 
is a sinking sand. Kwake Yesu nasimama die mwamba mwamba nasimama. Lakini kwa kizungu kizungu waikwa hivyo. Kwa kizungu wanasema all other ground is a sinking sand. So mwenye alitwekea kwa Kiswahili at least alituraisishia. Huyo mtu akiimba hiyo kitu anajua ni kwa nini. Any thing you do outside the word of God is dangerous to your life. This is where this verse came from. Which verse? Chapter number 55 of Isaiah verses 8 to 10. Isaiah 55 verses 8 to, to 10. The Bible says, my thoughts are not for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways says the Lord let me just stop at that point just your thoughts are not my your ways ways is methods the method you use to do something is not the method of God the way you think is not the way God he's telling them here As the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your your thoughts why man has not been listening to God anymore man could not learn from God and as long as they're not hearing God like now it happened in the in, in Garden of Eden man does whatever he wants in the book of Judges, the Bible says, during those period, there was no, if you read the first chapter, the Bible says, because there was no king or leader in the land, everybody did what was good in his own eyes. And what did that bring? Their enemies invaded them and destroyed them. They began crying to God, oh God, when they cry to God, God will raise up a man. God will speak to the man. The man will bring the knowledge of what God said to the people. That is how they overcome. What is spiritual maturity? Romans chapter number 20 verse 1 and 2. Bible says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of in verse 1 he says bring your body to God as a living and then your mind will be renewed. When your mind will be renewed, what will you know? Three different God's will. He says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Renew your mind. How do we renew our mind? By being taught. Sit down. Let somebody teach you. That is when you understand the will of God. Otherwise, we'll continue saying like the Old Testament people. God's thoughts are not our. God's ways are not our. <laughs> God 
want you to sit down, think like him. Begin saying, Father, if it is your will, why don't you know his will? His will, sit down and learn from his word. You see, if, if you learn the will of God, your prayer is simplified. Huh? Like we, we prayed for one hour, and almost around 20 minutes, how the kingdom must be established in Marsabit. that your kingdom in Masabit has to be established through preaching, teaching, and healing. That's what Jesus was doing. He taught, he preached, he healed. And as he did that, the kingdom of God was established. So when we know the will of God, we know there's a place for preaching, there's a place for teaching, and there's a place for healing. So as I preach, and as I teach, the healing is natural. The kingdom of God is. I want to sit there and tell God, please help, help me. You know, I don't know what to do. What, what you should do is in the Bible. Sit down. Goodwill. What is goodwill? Goodwill is you see, when we talk about goodwill, we are talking about a, a, new, a new believer who thinks like non-believers. Like for example, there are things that are good both to us and to people not born again. In other words, when you are living in goodwill of God, you are living as good as a non-believer. There's no difference between you and non-believe. In chapter 3 of First Corinthians, Paul says to the Corinthians, he says, I will not speak to you like spiritual people. I speak to you like people are not born again. If there is this division, strife, beating, are you not behaving like people are not born again? He says, I don't speak to you. Goodwill. Is where you yourself, you don't even know much of the things that is the will of God. Ujui. Unagezitu. Acceptable will. Acceptable will is when you understand what God expects. You know, but you don't do it. And God will accept because it is your choice. You know what will happen? You refused to do it. Go the same as you Perfect will of God. Perfect will of God is when you do exactly what God expects of you. You don't question God anything. You are not disturbed by what He said. You do it without any question. Just let your mind be renewed. So that you know the good will, the acceptable will, and the perfect. Now, them that operate in the perfect will of God are led of the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit cannot lead you if you don't do what the Bible says. Many of the things we do from our choices are not in line with the word of God. Meaning it is not led of the Spirit. So, what are we saying? What we are saying is this, that uh, what we are saying is spiritual maturity is when you come to a level where you operate from the perfect will of God. And how can you operate from the perfect will of God? The Bible says, let your mind be renewed. How can your mind be renewed? How will your mind be renewed? We read that one. Ephesians chapter number 4. From verse 11.
the Bible says. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. He gave men as gift to the church. What is the purpose? For the perfecting of the saints. Perfecting. We're talking about perfect will. When you reach a level, let's, let's me finish, you'll get it. For the work of the ministry and for the defining of the body of Christ. Then it says in verse 13, till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Low unity of faith, knowledge of the Son of God, and to a perfect man and to the measure of the stature of the fullness of God. He says, until you knowledge that you have is the knowledge of Jesus. You don't question any, have any question about what he says. You begin thinking like he thinks. You begin doing what he could have done. Sometimes we ask ourselves, kama yesu angekua katika hii hali enye mini kondani, angefanya nini? Situ naulizanga swali kama yoko. Watine tu wanasema tuki kwa hiki kwa hose tunafundisha. Kwa suwana wanasema. Kama yesu angekua pasta wa hii kanisa. Ata saaje. And then the question is simple. Answer is simple. He's not concentrating on so many hundreds. He's concentrating on the twelve. The twelve will take care of the remaining. That's how Jesus will do. If I, I mature all of you, I know with time, you'll take care of somebody spiritually. There will not be any problem between you and God. There will be no problem between you and anybody else. So if we reach that level, It is easier to run church. Kama kanisa ya kina lai. Uzi kanisa lai isa isi. Mugikata kukoma hapa ndani. Mimi. Sitaki kusikia mambo eni. And very true. And that's why. Hakuna kanisa. Tano. Kona yote ya Mombasa. Vile unu. The way. So lives are put. Most all over this town. Lai has a church like that. And all of the churches he has. Is over 1,000 people. That are attending that church. Atafika hapo aje. Kama watu kata kata kukoma. You have been given apostles, prophet, evangelist, pastors and teachers. So that you are perfected in understanding the will of God. So that what happened in the Old Testament, in the, in the Genesis, the Garden of Eden, where Adam lost. You see, Adam lost because he had other information from the devil. Now God wants you to be moved, ruled, and worked out by his word. So wakati umeanza kufikiria vile Mungu anafikiria. Kufanya kazi vile Mungu anafanya. Kuongea kama Mungu anaongea. Umekoma. Hato kiongelesha mwenzako, tujo kiongelesha nani, kiongelesha mungu, unanena kulingana na vile mungu angeongea na uyu mwenzako. And it takes time and enough learning of the word of God for us to reach there. That is what I wanted to present today. Lord, we are grateful for your word. Our desire is to grow to a point where we manifest your glory in every area of our life. We want to display your greatness even through our living, our thoughts, words, and actions. And this is the journey we, want, we, have, we have begun. Where, Lord, we all of us, we grow up together. 